In this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can improve the stability of that small signal voltage gain. And so what we're gonna see is that all we need to do is add an emitter resistor, and that's going to stabilize that small signal voltage gain A sub V with respect to changes in beta. So as our beta is changing, we're not gonna see as much change in our small signal voltage gain. And so you might recognize that this is the same approach that we took when we were trying to stabilize our Q point with respect to changes in beta during our DC biasing unit. Another thing that we note is here's our circuit with that emitter resistor added is our emitter is no longer directly connected, connected to ground, but our emitter is still on the ground side of the circuit. So still on the ground side. And so because of that, this is still a common emitter configuration. Remember also, this will be in the summary table, but we also have our output as defined at our collector and our input connected to our base. So between all of these things, we still recognize this as a common emitter configuration. So let's see if we can't figure out our small signal voltage gain with this updated RE. Just like with last time, what we're gonna wanna do is look at our small signal equivalent circuit. So small signal equivalent circuit. And so as always, a good approach is to start by drawing our base collector and emitter terminals and then fill everything else in from there. So let's draw our base collector and emitter, something like that. And so again, between our base and emitter, we have R pi. That voltage across R pi is going to be V pi. And of course, the current coming into that base terminal is going to be our base current IB. We also have a dependent current source between our collector and emitter. The current is directed from the collector towards the emitter, and this is going to be beta times IB. And so in this case, we're going to neglect the early effect just for simplicity. Um, of course, we can add that in pretty easily just by adding our R0 uh, in parallel with RC, as we'll see here in a little bit. And so another way to say that is our R0 is equal to infinity, so we just treat that like an open circuit. Okay, so we've got our, our three terminals and what's going on in between them for our transistor. Now we wanna connect sort of all of these outside components. So let's start by noting that at our emitter, now we have to go through that emitter resistor RE before reaching ground. So we're gonna have something that looks like this now. So here is our new ground point, and so this is R sub E. Between our collector, we still have, uh, or off of our collector, we still have this RC, which is going to our signal ground. So remember the VCC, uh, we, we disconnect or deactivate our DC sources, so we treat that like a signal ground. So we have our RC, which is connected between those two points. Our V out is still defined at our collector, so we can come in here and write V out like that. Off of our base, same configuration as before. We have our R1 going to signal ground, our R2 going to signal ground, so those are going to be in parallel between the base and ground. And then our coupling capacitor is going to act like a short, and we have our RS and our VS between the base and ground. So adding those things in, so we have here between our base and ground, our R1 parallel R2, we then have our RS, and finally our small signal voltage source VS. So let's just connect all of that up. So we get something that looks like this, and so again, this is R1 parallel R2, and this is RS. Okay, so a little bit different than what we've seen before, but not too much. Uh, so again, what we can do is we can define an input resistance, so that's going to make it easier when we're trying to figure out an equation for sort of the input side of our circuit here. So let's call that R sub I. And now because the R sub I isn't as obvious, let's define another intermediate input resistance, R sub I B. And so this R sub I B would be the resistance looking into the base of the transistor. Whereas our R sub I is looking at sort of the input from here. So this would be our R sub I, and this would be our R sub I B. And again, those aren't currents, but we can do this dashed line to indicate its resistance looking in at that point. Okay, so what we want to do now, and let me also define our input voltage uh, to our amplifier, similar to how I did previously with VIN uh, across that R1 parallel R2 um, connection. 
So let's start on our output side because that's going to be relatively easy. Again, we note that this current uh, beta IV is going to be coming up in this direction, so that's going to be a voltage drop like this. Because of that, we can say that our output voltage V out is equal to negative beta IB times that resistance RC. Again, we would just add the early, uh, the early effect. If we added that, we'd have the R, lowercase r naught in parallel with that RC. On our input side, we can use the same equation we, we did before because remember, with this RI, we're saying this is all a black box and we're just gonna approximate everything in here as one resistor that is a value of RI. So that becomes a really simple voltage division equation, which is going to give us our VN is equal to VS times RI divided by RI plus RS. So the extra steps now for this configuration are going to come in finding that RI. So if we do sort of the similar thing and we say, well, now we have sort of a black box here and we want to reduce that to just one resistor, how are we going to do that? Um, well, before we do that, let's just say we have that resistor RIB. So then our RI is just going to be this resistance in parallel with our RIB. So we can say RI is equal to R1 parallel R2 parallel RIB. And so now we need to figure out our RIB. Well, we can say that our RIB is just going to be whatever. So again, let's say, let me bring this sort of black box notation back. So let's say we have some RIB resistance that looks like this. Well, we have some voltage across that, right? And some current going into that. And from Ohm's law, we know that our, our voltage is equal to our uh, current times the resistance. So we can rearrange and say our resistance is voltage over current. And so in this case, we see that voltage is our V in and our current is the IB. So let's use that and come down here. And we can say then that our RIB is equal to VN divided by IB, okay? So now what we can do is we can use KVL. So let me clean some of this up. So we can use KVL to find this VIN value. So we can do a KVL around this loop here. And we see we're going to be dealing with three voltages, our VN, our VPI, and the voltage across this emitter resistor. For our emitter resistor, to find the total current, we know we have IB coming in here, and we have beta IB coming in here. So from KCL, we're just going to have beta IB plus IB through our emitter resistor. So putting all of that together, we say that our VN is equal to IB times R pi. So that's the voltage across our our, our pi plus the current in our RE, which is IB plus beta IB times that emitter resistor RE. So if we combine that with this previous equation for RIB, what we see is if we calculate RIB, the IB value just goes out. So we're left with R pi plus one plus beta times RE. And so keep in mind, this is our resistance looking into the base of our BJT in this configuration. And so this is used a fair amount in some other configurations, enough that we call this our resistance reflection rule. So basically what's happening is our resistance at the emitter terminal is being reflected across to the base, and we can see increased by this value by a factor of one plus beta. All right, so now that we have that expression for RIB, we can come back up and we can plug that into our, our expressions up here. So of course we have our VN and our V out up here. And what we get is our small signal voltage gain. So of course our small signal voltage gain is still defined as V out divided by VS. And plugging all of that in or sort of combining those equations, we get negative beta times RC divided by that RIB term, which is going to be R pi plus the quantity of one plus beta times RE. And then we still have this voltage division uh, ratio, this RI over RI plus RS. Okay, 
So this would be our updated voltage gain equation, but we can make some pretty reasonable simplifying assumptions to get a, a you know, first order approximation. So let's simplify with some assumptions. Okay, so first of all, let's say that this input resistance RI, or sorry, not RI, uh, rather this RS, which is again, just an internal resistance with the source, uh, is typically going to be pretty small. And so let's say that that's actually going to be a lot smaller than this input resistance RI, because again, we've got several K ohm resistors, R1, R2, and we've got this R pi plus a beta, one plus beta RE, so, uh, let's say that is, is a fair approximation. So we can come down here and we can say, assume that Ri is much greater than Rs. And so what that's going to do is that's going to make this term right here approach one, all right? So our second assumption then, and so maybe let's just keep a sort of running update here. So we can say our AV, well actually let me put it a little lower down. Uh, so we can say our AV then is going to be approximately, so we have at the moment negative beta RC divided by R pi plus one plus beta RE, and we said that last term is approximately one with this assumption here. So let's make another assumption and let's say that one plus beta times RE is going to be a lot bigger than R pi. So again, remember R pi is typically going to be on the order of a K ohm. Our RE, you know, maybe not quite as large, maybe a little less than a K ohm, but we're multiplying it by this one plus beta factor. Um, if we assume that, then this part of the denominator, we can essentially neglect this R pi term. So now we're left with something that looks like this. Well, from this point, we can say beta is typically a pretty big number. So if we say beta is much greater than one, then beta is about the same thing as one plus beta, and we can get rid of that as well. And so what we're left with then is we see that our, our voltage gain is approximately just negative RC over RE. And so of course this isn't going to be super accurate, but this is going to be a good first order approximation. So a good first order approximation. So now let's compare this to what we saw with the previous configuration without our RE. So here's sort of our voltage gain equation. And so this was, let me just write, and actually let's maybe bring this down here. Okay, so here's our voltage gain equation when we had no RE in the circuit, right? And so this is just copied from the previous video. If we take these same assumptions, so if our RI is much greater than RS, this is going to go to one here as well. And if we have, uh, we neglected our early effect. So if we neglected our early effect here, uh, the R naught is going to be infinite. So this is just going to go to RC. And so we could say then for this case, our AV is approximately negative beta RC divided by R pi. So if we compare these two expressions, uh, what we see is that, so this just for clarity is with our RE. So what we see is that this expression up here, sort of as our goal, as we set out to do, has less dependence on beta. So less dependence on beta, so that is a good thing. However, if we consider typical values, you know, RC, order of K ohms, RE, maybe a little less than a K ohm, our gain here is going to be relatively small compared to this expression down here, where we have this beta term in the numerator for our gain. So again, keep in mind our beta is, is normally on the order of 100 or so. So what this means is that by adding this emitter resistor, we now have a smaller gain, which oftentimes is not going to be ideal. And so what this really highlights is that we're going to have trade-offs and we're gonna to have to decide what's more important for our given application. In the next video, we're gonna look at an example and we're gonna include some numbers so you can get a better feel for how much gain is being reduced, how much our dependence on beta is being uh, reduced, and kind of get a better feel for, for what that looks like in a real application.